are we the only universe? Well, you might think that this is the case, but actually it's a lot more complex than you might imagine. When we think of space, or we think of time, we tend to think of it as being sort of these absolute realities. Actually, it isn't. Space and time is a part of what we call the space-time continuum. Now, just think about that for a minute. That means the two of these things are connected together. So when we look out at reality in the universe, time cannot exist without space. Space can't exist without time. This is why we call it a continuum as a part of our reality. But where does this come from? It actually originally comes from Isaac Newton and what we call his mechanical laws. Like, for example, cause and effect or action and reaction. But really when it comes down to it, the space-time continuum was a product or creation of the Big Bang. But what if... Sometimes when I'm on a long plane flight, I gaze out at all those mountains and deserts and try to get my head around how vast our Earth is. And then I remember that there's an object we see every day that would literally fit one million Earths inside it. The Sun seems impossibly big, but in the great scheme of things, it's a pinprick, one of about 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, which you can see on a clear night as a pale white mist stretched across the sky. And it gets worse, there are maybe a hundred billion galaxies detectable by our telescopes. So if each star was the size of a single grain of sand, just the Milky Way has enough stars to fill a 30 foot by 30 foot stretch of beach, three feet deep with sand. And the entire Earth doesn't have enough beaches to represent the stars in the overall universe. Such a beach would continue for literally hundreds of millions of miles. Holy Stephen Hawking, that is a lot of stars. But he and other physicists now believe in a reality that is unimaginably bigger still. I mean, first of all, the hundred billion galaxies within range of our telescopes are probably a minuscule fraction of the total. Space itself is expanding at an accelerating pace. The vast majority of the galaxies are separating from us so fast that light from them may never reach us. Still, our physical reality here on Earth is intimately connected to those distant invisible galaxies. We can think of them as part of our universe. They make up a single giant edifice, obeying the same physical laws and all made from the same types of atoms, electrons, protons, quarks, neutrinos, that make up you and me. However, recent theories in physics, including one called string theory, are now telling us there could be countless other universes built on different types of particles with different properties obeying different laws. Most of these universes could ever support life and might flash in and out of existence in a nanosecond. But nonetheless, combined, they make up a vast multiverse of possible universes in up to 11 dimensions, featuring wonders beyond our wildest imagination. And the leading version of string theory predicts a multiverse made up of 10 to the 500 universes. It's a one followed by 500 zeros. A number so vast that if every atom in our observable universe had its own universe, and all of the atoms in all those universes each had their own universe, and you repeated that for two more cycles, you'd still be at a tiny fraction of the total, namely one trillion, 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 trillionth. But even that number is minuscule compared to another number, infinity. Some physicists think the space-time continuum is literally infinite, and that it contains an infinite number of so-called pocket universes with varying properties. How's your brain doing? Quantum theory adds a whole new wrinkle. I mean, the theory has been proven true beyond all doubt, but interpreting it is baffling. And some physicists think you can only unbaffle it if you imagine that huge numbers of parallel universes are being spawned every moment, and many of these universes would actually be very like the world we're in, would include multiple copies of you. In one such universe, you graduate with honors and marry the person of your dreams. In another, not so much. Well, there are still some scientists who would say hogwash. The only meaningful answer to the question of how many universes there are is one. Only one universe. And? A few philosophers and mystics 
might argue that even our own universe is an illusion. So as you can see right now, there is no agreement on this question, not even close. All we know is the answer is somewhere between zero and infinity. Well, I guess we know one other thing. This is a pretty cool time to be studying physics. We just might be undergoing the biggest paradigm shift in knowledge that humanity has ever seen. So here's the cool thing about that for science fiction. Science fiction doesn't hold us to reality. Science fiction adopts what's called the counterfactual, meaning it can look at a reality that we don't know if it exists, or maybe it does. Other universes could mean that there are literally a thousand, a million, a trillion, maybe an infinite number of other realities. And that means in the end that all the laws that we're familiar with that came from Isaac Newton, well, they're only relevant to our universe. And that opens up the possibility for multiple counterfactuals. Like I said in the video, in one universe, you could be marrying the most beautiful person in the world. In another universe, your luck may not go so well. In one universe, you could be a human being. In another universe, you literally could be a piece of cheese. The point is, in the idea of the multiverse, we get to throw out all the rules. And we get to look at what could be.